high on dopamine. Hey guys, happy 420. It's 420 Live. Jeff Kravitz coming to you on a beautiful Tuesday afternoon. We had an amazing show yesterday, dipping into the Bernie Man multiverse. You know, I go back and watch my intros every day. And yesterday I wore my rainbow fur and I had my crazy glasses on and my Outback hat. And I was like, came in full burner mode, you know, for everybody to be like, whoa, look at this crazy guy on screen. And I got black for the first two minutes of my whole gag. So I got home and I'm like, eh, I did all that sweat. Sweated it out in a rainbow fur for everybody for a gag that didn't even come off. But that's that's live television for you. And yesterday was my first real brain fart on the show where I actually forgot exactly where I was, who I was, and what I was talking about for the first time in 135 shows. As you know, we started this exactly six months ago. We started this on March 16th. I was quick to get online to reach out to kind of be with my friends and hang out. And, you know, after doing the show about the VR yesterday and going into all space VR and putting those Oculus headsets on and seeing how people can congregate and socialize without leaving the house and have experiences together. I, uh, you know, there's a there's an interesting future out there for the next year where I think we're going to get a lot more connected in, in different ways because we've been all through the point of uh, sharing the musical experiences online where we're talking to each other, chatting while live concerts are playing. We're all seeing that happen. And it, it's, it, let's be honest, it's, it's kind of a format that everybody's kind of, we all want live music. We're kind of done. I've talked to some friends of mine and are just like, you know, I'm kind of done watching all the shows. I appreciate the new music, all the new shows that are coming out. Our guest today, uh, James Casey is on aux chord live and they're doing the live streams for some of our favorite artists so it, it's interesting here i'm gonna be actually gonna pop up their little website there so you could check it out while i'm talking about it aux Chord live and uh you know they're they're doing live shows for people the live new music is something i can appreciate because it's got that freshness that newness but you know sitting around watching four hours of old shows and and uh you know talking to each other it, after a while let's face it we want new we want so the drive-ins are happening there's different things out there happening everybody's finding their way but meanwhile this virtual world opens up an entire new realm of possibilities and i don't see how anybody out there in the game that's that's sidelined nowadays from having not being able to have shows or concerts won't dip into this medium because it's a way to communicate with your audience and i think it's also a way to, to uh, generate cash with these uh shows you can sell tickets to these shows in the virtual world and the shows that you're doing online can be done in with a crowd where people are reacting. And it's just a very interesting thing. You know, granted, you have to wear the headsets and it's a different thing and you kind of get addicted to uh, having those things on. And they do take you to a different place. You don't understand anything that's going around you. You know, my wife tried them the other day and she was alone in a room and when she took them off, there were people sitting there and she's like, ah, what are you guys doing here? You're just watching me? And they're like, yeah, we were getting a laugh out of you trying to work the different stuff. So uh, the technology is, uh, it's really dialed in and it's gonna get even better, I think. So I, I encourage everybody out there to uh, check out the show yesterday. It was amazing to be able to talk to the people that are so forward thinking and so much in the front. I mean, that's one thing about the burner community and technology. They've created so many different things. I mean, I don't know if you know about Function One speakers, but these this system, when I first heard it at one of the camps, uh, at uh, the Opulent Temple Camp, and I heard these Function One speakers, and oh my God, the music is just, you get so enveloped by it. It's like you slip into a warm, fuzzy blanket of, of bass, of low bass, and you can hear everything, and it's just absolutely incredible. And they, these speakers designed by burners and have changed the EDM world and changed the electronic world. Everybody has, I think there's a, some competition besides Function One, but uh, you know, we're, uh, it's amazing to watch how the technology changes and how it's making our lives easier. This is the computer revolution we're going through. Look, we're losing all these old institutions like DMV is gonna be all online and we're not no longer enough to go wait. Everything is gonna change. I mean, cause people can't be in line. People can't be together. So we're finding a new paradigm. Everybody's finding a new way. So, uh, and this is my new way coming to you live and majoring in distraction. As you know, I didn't talk about politics once my entire intro. So our guest today, James Casey, 
is an amazing sax player. Every time he steps into a song that I've been up in the audience for, I watch the whole crowd just elevate. He really knows how to take everybody for a musical journey. And I'm really excited to talk to him. I want to thank my friend, DJ Richie G, Richie Grossman for aligning us. And uh, we're going to welcome our friend, James Casey to the show from Hawaii. Aloha. What's up, man? How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm all right. I mean, I can't really complain. It's, I'm in Hawaii, so it's, <laughs> it's that part. How long have you been there? Uh, I left New York the day after I played with um, I played with Graham Lesh, uh, Graham Lesh at uh, Brooklyn Bowl, and I left the next day. So I'm guessing that was uh, the 6th, March 6th. Oh, so you were out before they actually shut down. Right. Yeah. No. So I, there was we already had a, a, a trip to Hawaii planned. And when we were supposed to come back, New York had already shut down, and so it didn't make any sense to come back. So you moved in. But did you have to find Basically, a place to live? Uh, I have a, one of my old roommates from New York. Uh, he he was living on Kauai. And um, we actually, the, the vacation we took was in Maui. But uh, we hit him up the day before we were supposed to come back. I was like, hey, man, we got to do something. He's like, no, just come over here. I have an Airbnb that we can't feel because COVID. So let's come through. So we did. And wow. uh been here ever since, basically. Which which part of the island are you on? Uh, I'm on the say what now? You're in Kapa'a or are you no, in no, no. I'm in I'm in Lawai. I'm in uh it's the south side. South side. Yeah. I love it there. I love Kauai. Have have you been there before? Not to Kauai. I've been to Hawaii uh when I was a, a child. So this is my first time here since then, and I, I love it here, man. I, Kauai, I mean, I've been here for six months, so there Kauai, you go. the the uh the topography in Kauai, like going up into the Grand Canyon of the West, and it's it's beautiful and it's amazing. And you never like uh, there's this place that we that we went a few weeks ago, and you just kind of drive up, and then all of a sudden it's just there's this fog, and once the fog clears, it's just this view blue beautiful ocean and like and to your right there's a giant canyon it's it's ridiculous it's i love this place yeah it's beautiful it's beautiful and a hell of a lot different than new york oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i've lived in brooklyn for the past uh since 2000 since i left school in 2007 and uh it's not the same <laughs> the uh th that's a nice pandemic shift there going to hawaii <laughs> for the whole time did you have to like shop and get clothes and stuff you just wear bathing suits i'll be 100 percent honest with you i've I, I had two weeks clothes with me and i've been wearing the same two weeks of clothes for the last six months <laughs> i don't know what i'm gonna do if i have to go back to new york i don't have any cold clothes i don't have, you know, <laughs> i haven't worn shoes in months it's yeah <laughs> yeah, you, you, there's nothing to head back to New York for right now. I mean, unfortunately, that's 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 my mindset. We're not going to really go back until things get. I mean, to whatever can be considered normal. Uh, if I can go out and play a show, then I'll go back. Until then, it doesn't really make sense because I'm, there's no money to be made there. There's no there's no way for me to do what I do. So. Why? Wait, so most is most of your living. You you've been a touring musician, and I know you play studio also. But is that the main amount of money's made? Oh, uh, for for the for the most part, it's, I'm a, I'm a touring musician and a producer, so I do a lot of uh, songs for different artists and everything. But I mean, I'm a saxophone player, so that's that's what I do. I play with people. That's 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 what I've been doing my whole life. So it's right. really I mean, this whole situation was. It, it, it hit the whole community extremely hard, and I know you all know that. I mean, you obviously know that because you're a photographer. So you, you, you my whole job's you. done. I'm done. I mean, I have not. I've shot once in six months. Right. I mean, I've played with people zero times since that last show. Have people been sending you tracks? Of course. Yeah, people send me tracks, and you, you play on them. And uh, I've created a bunch of stuff to do live streams and stuff with, and like just to just to create. But to actually play with people, I mean, that's that's the that's the thing. That's what we do. That's what we've grown to love. That's what we've been doing since I was three. So right, and not not, not only out. not only as a job, but as a as for enjoyment no, no, too, no. for enjoyment, for edification, for just to be able to like express yourself. It, it's it's way more than just making money. It's 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 what I've done my literal whole life. So to not be able to do that. Every once in a while, I just kind of sit back and think, like, how difficult. Like, it's, it's crazy. I haven't played with anybody in six months. I've did, you never bring a, did you bring a sax? Of course. Of course. Oh, okay. Course. Check it. 
Because you're on vacation, I didn't think two weeks. Maybe you'd be yeah, like, no, 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 no. See, if you go on vacation and you go two weeks without playing, then it's like you got to. It takes another two weeks to get back to where you were. So that's right. Like, nah, nah. So, yes. So you didn't know you were coming back. Let's get into your early days. So you're saying you started at three years old. Were you that young when you started with music? I, uh, no, or? not saxophone. Because I mean, no, you, of course, you don't start, you're not supposed to start saxophone. You got to be bigger to, than the yeah. saxophone, right? Not only that, you got to have teeth. So they got to have like adult teeth. You can't have baby teeth trying to play a saxophone. It doesn't really work that well. Uh, uh, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Well, I mean, your, your front teeth are the first ones to come out. So you can't you can't play it without it. So uh, right. but I started music. Uh, my mom is a pastor and my dad uh, was a choir director and a singer. And I grew up in an extremely musical household. So we started very early. I was playing drums at her church since I was three-ish. Wow. Uh, I was in a singing group. <laughs> since i was three like a like a children's singing group and we actually like sang at um uh we sang we sang at uh clinton's inauguration one of his inauguration like the one of the inaugural balls we sang it right. there we sang for a few presidents it's, it's a whole lot of stuff that we did back in dc like a like a little kids singing group or whatever and uh i started playing saxophone when i was nine in fifth grade, because uh, that's when band classes start in started in D.C. And I already played drums, so I, did, I wanted to learn something else. So, yeah, I, I think I joined band around the same time. I was playing like trumpet. You know, first you had to play flutophone and then recorder, and then they're like, "All right, what's your in pick an instrument?" I went with trumpet. Yeah, yeah. I, I did it for a couple of years, and then I was like, I went to bass. <laughs> nice. You it's probably it's probably the better move. Um, yeah. Well, <laughs> yes. It, Bass wasn't as much fun either, so then I switched to guitar. I love to play. I just mm -hmm. played the other day with some friends in the garage on Sunday. We got together for like three hours and just jammed, and it's just it was like we just don't do it anymore. Even that is something Man, that's so I'm simple. jealous. I'm honestly <laughs> jealous. I'm honestly jealous. I wish that, that I don't know anybody on this island. I don't, well, that's not true. I don't know. I don't know very many musicians. I met like two so far, and I don't know anyone who you know is. I don't want to talk out of school. Bill, Bill Kreutzman lives on that island, I think. So I've heard he lives here. I, I saw I saw Santana at the beach a few months ago. Oh, uh, but I don't know him, so I didn't go to him and say, "Hey, hey, man, I, I play too." So okay, it's not <laughs> so I would just walked over my sax and be like, <laughs> "Nah, hey, man, man. I, I'm outside the beach. I'm on my sax. <laughs> you don't take it with you to the beach. <laughs> it's not what you do." <laughs> Plus, I mean, if you're you're sitting at the beach with your, with, he was there with his wife, and I'm it's, it's, I'm at the beach with my lady. I'm not gonna like look at somebody. Hey, sir, I just wanted to let you know, I also do the music thing. I do the music thing. You. I do the music. So just letting you know. Well, you know, I I, I do happen to have some friends in the Kreutzmann family, and I'm I am gonna let them know that there's a badass sax player on that island that's dying Please to play. Please do, man. I would. Yeah. You don't know how what what i would give up to just be able to play with somebody just to be able to play so i i'd, I'd really appreciate that so because you've been doing it so long so you're a kid you took up the sax at nine then through high through all through uh middle school and then in the high school high school band middle school, I assume? high school well i was uh <laughs> i was i was playing football in high school and then i got hurt uh i tore my acl and so I, you can't play football anymore. You can't get surgery for ACL until after you finish growing. So there was just no reason for me to do it anymore. So um, that's when I actually got more serious about music because I just I had so much time on my hands and I had nothing else to do. So um, that's yeah, that's when I started really practicing and everything. And um, Berkeley, I, I made all state choir. I made all state choir. Uh, my first year, my first and only year in choir in, in high school. And I went to choir because. There's way more girls in choir than band. So, uh, <laughs> so I made all state choir. And then Berkeley, this Berkeley College of Music started sending me uh, literature because of that. And I wanted to go and check it out. So I, uh, my parents, God bless them. They, they, my mom sold her stock in Intel so I could go to uh, the summer program at Berkeley because it cost $5,000. We didn't have any money, but my mom, she sold her stock paid for it so i could go to berkeley summer performance program and um i ended up going to school there i got a scholarship to go to school and then um i left school and moved to new york so now i'm, I'm, I'm jealous because when i was in i was my <laughs> spot berkeley was like the gold standard like all my friends were like we should go to berkeley but i didn't know what it was 
I didn't know what it was. I just like I was literally at home and I I, I got mail because I mean yeah, I'm I'm 14. I don't never get mail. Somebody sent me a piece of mail like oh wow so I got something and it was from this school called Berkeley and I, I didn't know what Berkeley was. My dad knew what Berkeley was. He's like oh 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 wow. I was like I, I, can I go to this thing? He's like no, you can't. We don't have five thousand dollars to send you your 14 year old self all the way out to Boston. Nah, but fortunately uh, they they figured it out. But when you went, was it for singing or was it for sax? Oh, no, no. They, 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 I, I had the option. So I decided to go for saxophone. And what was the biggest revelation you learned out there that you wanted to go? I was not, there? I was not good. I was terrible. <laughs> I was not, I, I was a terrible, terrible musician. I got there and I was so confused. I was like, how, how, how are they so much better? We're the same age. What happened? What did I, what was I doing that they were so much better at me? They're 15, I'm 15. I don't even, I'm not even playing the right notes. Like, I don't even know the right finger is on a saxophone. And they're just like, Wah. I'm like, I don't, how do they do that? But being there actually showed me where I, what I, where I wanted to go, where I'd wanted to be, and then how to get there. So cut to two, cut to two years later, I went back for the next, for another summer performance program and uh, ended up getting a scholarship to the school. So well, nice, yeah. nice. They must have been practicing a hell of a lot between 14 and 16. I, I, I will say this. Uh, I'm, I'm cutting out a whole lot. <laughs> because <laughs> because uh, I'm cutting out a whole lot because it's, we only have a, a certain amount of time. But there is a whole lot of things that happened in my life between then and the time I actually went to school. Like the first time I had a scholarship to Berkeley, but they didn't accept me to the school. So I it was. I also graduated high school early, and my parents were like, "You, you're not going to college at 16. You're not going to college at 17. You're going to college at 18." So oh. it was a whole lot of things. So I didn't actually get there till two years later, but I ended up there. And then you had two years at home, just hanging out between 16 and 18. Not really. I mean, I went to I went to a JC. I went to mm -hmm. a junior college in in Arizona, um, and I also since I tore my ACL, I had to get the surgery. So uh, I I went to school for a year and then got surgery on my knee and, and then after after rehab and went to Berkeley. So what what was your biggest revelation when you got to Berkeley? Got to like, Berkeley? Yeah. How the hell are they so good? They I mean like, still the even when you got in there the and if, no 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 so that was a summer program of like good people from you know age 15 to 20. They're all good. These are students <laughs> these students were the best of the best well before they got there. So by the time they got to Berkeley, I I literally, I, I swear to God, the first day, the first day, uh, the first day, well, the first week I got there, uh, I got invited to a jam session. And it just turns out that everybody at this jam session, who they're all good friends of mine now, they were all at school on what they call a presidential scholarship. Miss Reen, they got that scholarship well before they were 18. And, and they were like Berkeley was flying them around to different countries. Like these are our students. And so I go there and I'm like, I, I didn't know. Like, I didn't know that you could be that good. I, I played a song. I played like Green Dolphin Street. It's a, a really easy jazz standard because I didn't know all the jazz songs that they knew. And they were just like going in. I'm just like, oh my God, this dude <laughs> sounds like, how does, how do they sound like the recordings? How do they sound like the recording? I literally called my dad after I got, I, I got home. I was like, dad, I need to go home. I don't. I don't know how they did that. I, this. Doesn't make any sense. And my dad was like, to his to his credit, he was like, "You're not coming home. You, you no, no. We already paid. We, you know, your your room is not your room no more. My mom, your mom <laughs> made it to an office. No, you you were there. You're going to stay there, and you're going to go through it. So that's what ended up happening. And what 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 was the thing for you that uh, that uh, opened up the door for you to be able to excel into that? area well one i'm very competitive and two um i wanted it i wanted to be a musician i wanted to be a professional musician i wanted that i wanted whatever that was i wanted it you know so i wanted to get to the point where i could be like they are i want to be as good as they are i want to be as as confident and as 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 competent as they are so I did it. Um, was it the 10,000 hours? 
I mean, you you put in your ten thousand. I mean, we I've I I've put in at least ten thousand. I put in ten thousand hours of performing, let alone practicing. But it, it was <laughs> one thing that really one thing that really actually changed me was a uh, there's a club in Boston called Wally's. Wally's is a club that everyone who's ever come out of Boston, out of Berkeley, out of New England Conservatory, out of any of those schools, out of Boston Conservatory, you come out of Wally's because Wally's is a sink or swim club that is a real like if if you if you if you're playing at Wally's, you're good. So while I was at school at Wally's, there was Nikki Glaspie, there was Louis Cato, um, there was um uh Esperanza Spaulding. There was Christian Scott. There was Igmar Thomas. There was Megan Stabil, and she's she's over the revive. There, there's literally every any single person who was in Boston at that time was at Wally's, and you had your night, and you played, and you played for four and a half hours every single night. I mean, not every night. Four and a half hours of your your show was like we get there, we start at eight thirty, and we end at two. That was your thing. You had an hour break in the middle, and that was your set. For fifty dollars a person, and that was what we did. So I mean, basically, Sam Kenninger was there. All the letters came out of there, like from the generation before me. So it it was it had been what it was for a long time. And by the time I got there, that was where I was. I was never on time to my Monday class at nine a.m., my Wednesday class at nine a.m. because I was always at Wally's until two in the morning or Sunday night and Tuesday night and Wednesday night. Did, what, didn't you figure out the book that? The, the 11 o'clock class? I mean, I literally, by, by the time by the time I left, none of my classes were in the morning. Like, all of my classes were, uh, unless I had no choice, every single class I took started afternoon. Oh, yeah. I, same yeah. thing first year. I booked all 8 a.m. classes, and then I was like, what the hell am I thinking? Because uh, 8 a.m. doesn't seem like it's that early when you were going to high school at 5 in the morning, 5.30 for, for band practice. It didn't seem like 8. Oh, no, I can always wake up. Shoot, man. <laughs> Well, you know, Berkeley, I mean, to hear you talk about it, it, it makes you realize that how hard it must have been. I mean, it, that first year must have been really scary. Man, <laughs> I, I'm putting it, am I underselling it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay, so uh, I, I don't know how many of you viewers know anything about jazz, but many of the top jazz people who are out right now we're at berkeley right right when i got so when i got there uh christian christian scott was there but also um kendrick scott so kendrick scott is one of the best jazz drummers out right now he was there he was he was in his last semester walter scott was also in his last semester like there was a whole group of people who came from houston and just destroyed the place and they were all there at the same time and i get there i'm like this dude sounds like Joshua Redman, who I just found out was a jazz player. Like, this dude sounds just like John Coltrane, who I've been practicing. For. How? How? And I'm up here, like, playing scales wrong. Like, I, I man. But who was your influence? Uh, Now or then? No, no, back then. Back then. Who were you studying? Oh. Were you studying Coltrane? Was that the gold uh, yeah, standard? Coltrane. Coltrane. Parker? I, Coltrane. I, I Coltrane. didn't really get into uh, bebop. My, my teacher... At the uh, my first teacher, I, got, I had my first saxophone teacher when I was sixteen. So my teacher was like, "Okay, you have great ears, but you have no facility on the horn. So we're not going to start you on the bebop stuff. We're going to start you on the modal jazz. So that's like kind of blue, like so, like uh, fifty nine and after. So more instead of playing chords, instead of like sounding out chords, you're actually playing melodies over over chords, which served me well for the rest of my life but that's that was where i started so I, yeah i went from coltrane and ended up like loving wayne shorter's music and i still love wayne shorter the way he plays oh man weather yeah. report damn Come man it, his his whole his his whole thing is i want to play the right note right now i don't have to play all the notes i'm gonna play the right note and that's that that's stuck with me ever since yeah, I mean, you have a great, I mean, saxophone is one of my favorite instruments to listen to in, in a band when it's added to a band here in Brantford, play with the Grateful Dead and growing up listening to stuff. I think Giant Steps, I listen to Giant Steps and I watch this annotated video to Giant Steps and it's, it was the craziest thing ever. I can't believe anybody could play with a breath the way Charlie Parker played. I mean, it, that, was, it, that was John Coltrane. Well, oh, that's Coltrane. Just so you know. Not Giant Steps. So you know. What's the song I'm thinking of? You talk about confirmation? 
No, no, maybe it is giant steps. Now, Coltrane was giant steps. Coltrane is giant steps. So that was what I played for uh, my uh, my first audition to Berkeley. Really? Yeah. Transcribed the whole record and, and played it. Wow, that is crazy. And they were so much better than me <laughs> when I got to school. <laughs> when you heard other people play it. Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, they could play. So, so I was playing the transcription. They could solo over it. I couldn't solo over it at the time. I could play what Coltrane played, but I couldn't play anything that I was doing. They were just like, yeah, okay, whatever. The, the changes, whatever. Let's 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 work on something higher. And I was like, no, I need to know this this thing first. The change. How do you do that? So, yeah, I yeah. thought so that's a melodic playing for sure. It's yeah. unbelievable. Um, and do they teach you about the business of music when you're at Berkeley? Well, they can if you they will if you take those classes. I was actually I was actually a music business major at Berkeley. Um, not because I wanted to become an entrepreneur per se, outside of sole proprietorship, but because I didn't want to, you know, get screwed over by the industry, which right. will do that to you. And it Excuse me. And it actually happened to me anyway. So there you go. But no, I, you, Berkeley will teach you whatever you want to learn. Well, you can learn whatever you want at Berkeley. But the thing that the, the reason why you go to Berkeley is not necessarily to because if you're going to be good, you're going to be good anyway. You're going to be you're, you're out there to meet people. That's why you go to Berkeley. You meet the people who you will be in contact with for the rest of your life. So I've known Nikki. I've known Nikki Glassby from um, if power um nikki's been on the, the show party. before yeah, I, yeah she's a good right. friend so i've known nikki since the like the first few days like in 2002 lewis cato i met him in 2003 when he got there um uh who else was there i mean literally the same people who I, I, sam sam kenninger who used to play with lettuce i met him at wally's he had the tuesday night shot the tuesday night gig at wally's so i was an 18 year old kid going up to like they make you if you're 18, it's a it's a it's a hole in the wall bar. But if you go there as an 18 year old, they know the you know, the musicians come, so they make you stand like at the front of the stage by the bar, so they won't get in trouble for you being there, you know, underage. Right. So yeah, no nah, man, every week that's that's why you go to Berkeley. You go to Berkeley for to to meet people, to meet the same people that you'll be dealing with for the rest of your life. And what was who'd you meet at Berkeley that you ended up working with? It was lettuce guys. Oh, not well. So Sam Sam Kenninger was in Lettuce, but they are the Lettuce guys. They're older than I am. They're they're all about seven eight years older than I am. So they were from the generation before. Uh, but I did meet Sam there. Um, I met Nikki Glassby there. I met Jerry L. Johnson. Jerry L. the he's over the uh, the the DC chapter of the Grammy. So he's a good friend of mine. I actually met Rashawn Ross from Dave Matthews Band when I was fifteen at the summer program because he was a student at Berkeley then. So I met him then. That's when I first met him. Um, all the guys from Turquoise were at Berkeley when I was there. Wow. Um, yeah. Uh, who else? From uh, there's a lot of people from a lot of different. Like half of Justin Timberlake's band was at school while I was there. Uh, like the whole, <laughs> it it spreads out throughout the whole thing. So like we, Esperanza Spalding was there when I was there. Uh, and, Hine, uh not Hang, but um, uh, Lake Street Dive was there. Like a lot, a lot of people. Yeah. Wow. I mean, a lot of people that became very popular, too. I mean, that school just churns out the talent. It's talent, but it's also the people you meet, man. I mean, they've met people while they were there that propelled them on. And like we all tried to bring other people up. The band King, I mean, Paris, the producer, she was there. She was there when I was there. And yeah, so Berkeley. So uh, talk a little. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about what your live, what you got coming up live, because I know you're doing this aux chord live. Right, right. So uh, at the beginning of this pandemic situation, I obviously saw that we are going to be in some 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 trouble. So the musicians are going to be in some serious like some serious trouble because we can't go out and play in front of people anymore. We can't we can't gather. So uh, um, my my business partner, my girlfriend, and I, we were sitting in in brooklyn in my apartment before we flew out saying we got to do something like something has to happen because we won't be able to play anymore and the we were we were, we were talking together and, and brainstorming and the, and the idea was an online venue but at the time we didn't really know what an online venue meant like what does that look like what what is an online venue but when we got out here 
And in the beginning of March, everybody started doing these uh, streams and whatnot, these podcasts or these streams on Facebook and Instagram and blah, 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 blah. I was like, okay, that's cool. Except they were all to a man busking. You're, 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 you put your you put your 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 tip jar your virtual your tip jar yes. and, and hope that somebody gives you money and hope that somebody scrolls by and sees you doing something and like benevolently gives you money and I in the beginning apparently it was cool for a lot of people like they were a lot of people were just like oh god it's it's difficult all oh, the musicians blah 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 but after a while benevolence goes away I mean everybody's struggling it's well we're also, you're also getting hit, hit up by a million different places too it's not just exactly. musicians it's everybody it's a crew it's yeah. it's, it's I, everyone I feel so bad for everybody who who's who's in every crew that I've ever worked with because I mean we at least can can do these live streams they can't do anything right. I mean I mean it's not like I can be like hey man can you come and put up these trusses in my backyard like they can't no. there's nothing for them to do yeah. so and well, and, and also we should mention Nito, also the National uh, Institute uh, for the Small Independent Theater Owners. Right, all the small clubs that are getting beat up too. All of them, everybody's getting beat up, and it's not just the, it's the it's the it's the it's the small clubs, it's the bars, it's the big places. It's I mean, there are places that's just not going to open up. It's not going to be here anymore. So yeah, from the Garden to the Nine Thirty Club, right? I mean, it's like it's, everything. It's unfortunate. So I mean, I. I tried to think of a way to do it, and we figured it out. We figured out a way to put to 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 have people do their live streams behind a paywall, so they can actually. It's a ticketed show. Like it's 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 not like you're just like okay, I'm going to do something and just put it out and hope and hope somebody comes and watches. You're having people come to watch you do your stream, and it's a paid situation, and they're paying you. You have a tip. You have a tip button if you'd like, but it's. It's for artists. It's for us. And we're giving you 100% of your ticket price. So if you come over here and, and stream your show, your ticket is $10. Artist gets $10 of that ticket. We put a small surcharge on the top to actually, you know, cover our costs and everything. But the artist gets that money. I, I'm an artist. I get it. I'm not trying to gouge anybody. I want us to be able to do everything that we can. And on top of that, I, I don't know if you actually know the the stipulations of the streaming for uh, Facebook. Face, and well, face, yeah. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Because that's some interesting new rulings Facebook has on how musicians can operate. Because people have been using the platform of Facebook to raise money, like you're talking about, by busking and right. showing live shows and streaming. Is it, is it live music that they're after, or is it any music? Well, they're saying it's live music. That, I mean, it's 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 streamed live music. It's streamed music that they're after, but the wording is such that you can't really tell now they're saying that they were trying to walk it back a little bit because of all the backlash uh but no one really knows what it's going to end up and it might end up in a situation where you're playing your song and they're and they shut you down because of some performance rights issue that you don't know anything about so they're saying that you can play for, you can perform your songs but you can't have you can't perform other people's songs or you can't i don't know that it's it's well, you, you know, when so you do that, in, well, you do that in a nightclub, like if you're yeah. in a nightclub and you play someone else's song, then the bar play, pays ASCAP and BMI right. fees so that anybody, they can play songs on the jukebox and they can, mm -hmm. you, but people have to pay for jukebox when you hear music. People are making money yeah. in, night, in a club or in a bar or whatever when you hear oh, music. Oh, I know. I mean, I'm, I'm with BMI. I definitely fully understand that. So I. Well, no, but our, 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 our viewers might not, is what I'm saying. That, right, how, right, that, right, right, that dynamic right, right. So is. I know you get time, it. <laughs> Every time your song plays, you're supposed to get paid a percentage of something. Um, like if you're if your song plays on the radio, you get like the radio by FCC rules has to pay out a certain percentage. I think it's something like eight to nine percent of their total gross to the artists. So that's why we all like to be played on Sirius XM because you get a whole lot more because they only have a certain number of channels. But that's what it is. Um, but you like the. Facebook doesn't want to be a venue. Facebook sees that they got to pay a whole lot more money, plus the bandwidth that they have to pay out for people streaming is 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 got to be ungodly. So they 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 want to stop it, and I don't necessarily blame them. It doesn't really hurt me. We're over here just trying to do as good a job as we can for artists. So, but it also, creates another another platform, right? It's a platform. It's a platform, and it's a platform that we want you to use because it's for you. It's for you. And 
like we we've made our user experience such that there's a whole lot of cool stuff over there. I, I, you'll you'll see it when you come over to watch it because like the, the we have a thing called fan cam, where basically the artist is playing, but the the fans can actually see each other while we're playing. So, right. I mean, it's 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 a it's a totally different type of interaction. So it's more than just the chat. It's more than just this. It's it's everything. Um, also, you all probably don't know this, but on Facebook, you can only stream. Uh, they they downgrade your stream to to 480p. Um, on Instagram, it downgrades it to 320, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, on on YouTube and Vimeo, you can only stream up to 720, but over where we are, you can stream up to 4K. Oh, you can have a, as good a product as you can possibly get. So come over, <laughs> right, come and check it out. What do you got coming up? Uh, we have a couple things coming down the pike. Uh, the the next show we have is going to be Natalie Cressman. So Natalie, Natalie, and her her boyfriend Ian. It's his birthday. Uh, in in a week and a half, and so they're doing a birthday show for him. So come over. Well, It'll I've seen the two of them streaming on uh, Facebook. And they're yeah. great. They're great. They're great. And uh, <laughs> obviously, Natalie from Trey's man, and like she's basically my sister. So uh, I, I'm really looking forward to what this thing is going to be. I think she, I think she wanted to like have like a, a, a interactive situation. So we might be making like capadinhas beforehand. So just <laughs> well, we're going to announce it. We're going to announce it in a few days. So I'll let that, you know what's happening. That's a lot of fun, and you got an amazing fan base because of Trey. I mean, everybody that 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 touches that fish machine, it's you're all of a sudden in a different league. I did not understand what it was. <laughs> 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 what was your realization? When did you realize that? Holy shit! What did I step in? All right, so I was I was in lettuce, right? I was in lettuce. And um, I was in Arizona at the time when I got the phone call. So cut back. I was in Lettuce and Soul Live. So uh, in 2012, Soul Live, Soul Live does this thing every year called Bowl Live. Well, they were doing this thing every year called Bowl Live at Brooklyn Bowl. Right. In, in Brooklyn, the original Brooklyn Bowl. And we would do um, two weeks of shows. Two weeks, like five days a week, day after day after day after day. After day. So this is the third one. It's in 2012. And uh, Jennifer Hartswick was a special guest for two nights. I didn't know who Jennifer Hartswick was. She didn't know who I was. I had never met her. I don't. I don't know. This this whole scene is weird. And like, I, I was literally in like this this jam scene is very 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 strange. What is happening here? But um, <laughs> Jennifer was like when we when we when we played, it was like, oh, yeah, hey, you're good. It's like, yeah, you're good too. Yeah, good to meet you. I'm like, yeah, you sound great. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you again, man. You sound. I'd love to play with you again. She said the same thing. Like, cool. Uh, cut to Jazz Fest that same year. Um, we were in One Eye Jacks backstage and i walked in and saw her. i was like oh hey how you doing I, and natalie was there too but i never i didn't know who they were i didn't know who natalie was so i was like hey you know i'm from the yeah, from from letters like, oh yeah yeah james actually i was joking around I was like hey so this is the year james getting gigs so if you have any gig i'm trying to get it like just let me know anything that's going on she's like actually i recommend you for something so if it happens it, it'll be cool i'm like all right cool whatever cut to uh, august I'm laying in bed at my parents' house, wondering what I'm like. I was I, I went back to Arizona. I, I left New York for the summer. I'm like, what am I gonna do? Like, am I gonna stay here? Am I gonna go to LA? What's what's going on? So I'm at home, sleep. I get a phone call. I get a text and a phone call at the same time. So I get a text and a phone call from some number I didn't know. I look at it, put it down, go back to sleep. I wake up. And I and and I listened to the the the, the message. It's like, hi, um, my name is Trey, and uh, I'm in this band called Fish, and I I, I want to know if you want to be like if you want to put, play in my band. I'm like, who is Trey? Who is a fish? I, I literally I literally I literally turned it off, went back to sleep, and then I, and then like an hour later, I looked at my phone again, and I saw that that Jennifer had texted me. She said. Trey's gonna call you, answer your phone. And I'm like, I don't know who this dude Trey is. So I call up, I call up um, I call up uh Jeff uh Eric Krasno from I call Crash from from Lettuce. I'm like, yo, some dude named Trey just called me. He's like, yo, dude. <laughs> he always like, dude, you know <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, all right, all right, all right. And then and then and then I talked to Shmeans from from Lettuce. And Shmeans, like he just went off for like five minutes. You don't even know. Oh my God. All right. So 
this is blah 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 blah. Like, oh, okay, all right, all right, all right. I'm tired, guys. Okay, cool. All right. So I call them back, and they were in a they were they were they were doing sound check, but he he talks to me. He's like, yeah. So I have this band. I have this other band, and I really want to. I I've seen videos of you, and Jennifer speaks highly of you, and I want you to play it. I'm like, okay, sure. And then yeah, whatever. And then it, he was, says, it wasn't like a tryout. It was like you're hired. Well, yes, yes, and no. So. They send me out the book. There was there was a there was a physical book back then of all the songs. And it was about this thick. So there's about a hundred and something songs in there that I had to learn. I had to learn on saxophone, which I mean that's that's simple because back then you actually they were still reading. Um also <laughs> Trey asked me on the phone. So do you do you feel more comfortable playing keys or or ewe or wind electronic wind instrument? I was like Keys. I, I've never played an Ewe. Now, now, I didn't play keys either. But I mean, I've never even hold, I've never even held an electronic wind instrument. So I'm like, oh, got to be keys. Like, cool. So they sent me two books. The first book is this thick. The second book is this thick, and that's for because they had just um, the released the uh, the record. They had just they they were just releasing the record. They were about to tour the record, and it was for um, it was on the album with Scabbard and 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 a whole bunch of other songs. And there was a whole lot of like synth keys parts. I did not play keys. I literally sat in a room in New York. I flew back to New York. I sat in a room for two weeks straight for 10 hours straight, just practicing piano. Cause I didn't know how to play it. So I had to learn how to play it before the start of the first tour. Um, but yeah, that's, well, but that's he has Ray on keys, but he wanted you to play some other instrument. There's, all right, so there's a lot of there's a lot of synth parts. So there'll be like the 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 auxiliary strings, the the all the other stuff, like the the bells, the the right, a, right. A lot of, so are, do you extra. still do that? Is that something? Yeah. Still, wow, yeah. Yeah. that's a good yeah. skill you picked up. I had no choice. <laughs> 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 I mean, it was either it was either that or. Uh, no, it wasn't either that or nothing. It was that okay. So let's figure this out right now. They're going fit today, now. So he said he sends you the two books. You got to learn the keys, and then you got to learn, learn the all the other the songs too. Mm -hmm. Learn all that, and then uh, we have a we have a rehearsal, a, a horn sectional uh, at Natalie's house in Brooklyn. I mean, in uh, back then she was living in Manhattan. So at Natalie's house in Manhattan, and me and Jennifer were there. Go there and play. And they hear, you know, play through some of the songs. And like, you know, she's like, you know, they give me the stuff that they know that it's going to be dip, not difficult, but like that we're going to play. We're going to go through this. We're going to have to, you have to learn first two very well. You got to learn last two. We got to learn these, like these songs that are staples. Like, all right, cool. Go through there, do that. The next day, do the same thing. But Trey comes as well, just to, you know, play a little guitar here. And I still don't, I don't get it. And then we have rehearsals for four days the next week in Jersey at, um, uh that theater out there capital not, not the cap no that's in that's in uh upstate new york there's, oh, okay. a, there's a there's a theater in, i think it's a state theater in jersey something like that uh four days of rehearsals pre like full rehearsals with like everybody there with the uh, um production and everything going on and i'd never been in a bit in, in a situation like that before like i <laughs> the biggest thing i had played before that was let was with lettuce so as far as production was concerned, so like having four days of rehearsals was amazing to me. Like when I got the when I got the letters gig, they called me. <laughs> they called me because uh, apparently Sam couldn't do a tour, and they're like, "Hey, uh, we got a flight for you. Can you can you get on a plane in four hours and then learn these songs on a plane because we got to play tonight for this tour." That started yesterday, and that's how I got the that's how I got the last gig. So right into a, the fire, like, yeah. So like having a thing that, that had like all this rehearsal and all that stuff, I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, everybody's like, but no, those rehearsals were <laughs> those rehearsals were like twelve hours long, and everything was like extremely. We, we worked on it all, but that's how the, the train gig started. And was that the first time you worked with like a band leader like that? That's the first time I I worked with somebody like that. That there, there's in general somebody like that. <laughs> that's the worst. That's the first time I worked with somebody like that. But that's also the first time I worked with a band leader like that. He's 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 very. Uh, everybody's different. Every band leader is different. Every situation that you find yourself in is going to be different. And and that he is very hands on. He's very much in tune with what's going on with his music, and he wants things to go 
the way that he wants them to go. And then you get to do whatever you want on top of that. So that was the first time working with somebody like that. But it's, it's been great. What was your biggest revelation there? Of working with him? Yeah. There's levels to this. <laughs> There's, There's levels. levels. There's levels to this stuff. Like that, that was my biggest revelation. Like it, I, the thing that every time I get to a new situation, I find out there's levels to it. Like when I got to Berkeley the first time, I was like, oh, there's levels. Like I, the, you could be here or you could be here and you want to get here. So as I've moved up and as I've as my career, careers progress, you find different levels to it. Like So I, I think that that's the biggest revelation. And because I mean, at the end of the day, it's still twelve notes. We're still doing the same thing that I was doing as a as a three year old. But the things that are on top of that, the the uh, the different types of musicality, the uh, the 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 professionalism in how you approach everything, as opposed to just approaching music, like things like that, uh, how you treat your crew, how you treat your fans, how like all of that stuff that 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 changes as you get up higher. So those are the things that I've learned as we've gone on, as I've, as my career has progressed. And uh, playing with a guy that wants you to go as and take it outside as far as possible in a rock scene. I mean, usually in that kind of situation, like when you're playing with Megan Trainer, there's not going to be any 10 no, minutes. No, you, you, when you're playing with Megan Trainer, there's it's an 88 minute set. It's the same every night. The very, like you, <laughs> You you get to like okay so when I was when I did the Megan Trainer tour I was halfway through the tour I started singing the duet with her it says duet uh, that she sings with John Legend and I became John Legend for the rest of the tour <laughs> and because uh, she that's a story in a, in itself like she <laughs> she overheard she overheard me singing and then all and then the next day she was like so I want you to to sing the song with me I'm like ha ha, ha. I thought she was joking. <laughs> No, the next day she's like, "No, James, I'm serious. When when are you, when are you going to sing it? You, you are you ready tonight?" I'm like, "No, no, no, I'm not ready right now. I don't know the words. I, no, no." Um, but yeah, so that's how that ended up happening. Uh, uh, the first time I was singing, my hands were shaking like this. I was literally like, "In the blink of an eye," like scared in the back. But uh, yeah, things yeah. are different for with with a band like that or with a situation like that everything is to a click and all the the lights are to the same midi clock so everything has to be like this all the dance moves all the everything so with hey, but you, and you had played like with Trey before that right yeah so you yeah. So you're seeing the two different sides the music business Right, and then right. the music business that has some swing and some fun to it. And really, as a musician, it must be incredibly liberating to play with somebody like Trey. It is. There is. The thing is, I mean, music is music. Like, I love music. I love it no matter who I'm playing with. As long as they're good. I love it. I love doing what I'm doing as long as it's a, a, a positive atmosphere for me. Now, the difference is. And the rigidity of the pop world as opposed to the rock world or the funk world or the something like that, I I definitely go more towards the improvisational aspect of things because of you know that's my upbringing. But I, I have an effect. I mean, I appreciate what they do over there. I appreciate how every night is going to be perfect, like because that's pop. Pop is perfect. The pop is is a is a is a prepackaged bento box or a pre-packed like it's a it's a snickers bar you know exactly what you're gonna get every single time with the snickers bar you know the exact amount of peanuts the exact amount of whatever but um like a tray show is like <laughs> it's like some brownies you made you you made at home you don't know what's uh, like or you some brownies your friend made you that they're bringing over you don't know what it's going to be it could be weed brownies it could be all <laughs> sorts of things it could be the best it could it could be it could be stale. You don't know, but it's it's a it's a surprise. Whatever it is, it's going to be a surprise. With the pop, you know what it's going to be. With this, it's just like let's see let's let's see what type of good tonight's going to be. Well, hey, you know, there was a thing that when I was shooting bands because like I, when I first moved to LA, most of the things I was shooting was all these MTV bands and all these mm -hmm. pop bands, and it was like one you'd see the same show every night. And then when I started getting into the dead and I started getting into fish, I was like, holy crap, every night's a new adventure. Every single night. It's, it's more along the lines of jazz. Because, it, I mean, the jam band world, it stems from jazz and, and R&B and rock. It's kind of like a mishmash of all of them. And um, 
in jazz, it's all improvisation. You know the song. I know the song. We all know the song. The song is not going to sound the same from one minute to the next, let alone one night to the next. So let's let's go and see what happens. So that's 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 the that's the basis of the jam band world as well. Right. And, and amazing that people can make a living having fun with their jazz musicians, too, because a lot of that, that pop stuff, it's a job. And yeah, yeah, night after night after night, it gets old, but it's a job and you're getting a check for playing music, which is what you went to school for and trained for all your life. But you're not really getting your rocks off. Right. There is a there, I mean, I'll say it like this. Some people for some people that works very, very well. It's kind of like there, there are people who are really, really good riveters. There are people who are really, really good welders. But then there are people who are really, really good at designing. You know what I'm saying? That it doesn't mean it doesn't mean it's bad or good for no, no. Everybody has a good thing, right? Yeah, you need both. Like that. Okay, so for a classical musician, their go, their job is to play this piece of music perfectly every night. Whatever they're playing, it has to be perfect. For me, my job is to, as a as a soloist, my job is to portray whatever I feel like portraying. So if I'm not in a good mood, if I'm in a bad mood, I'm going to play like I'm in a bad mood. But you're going to know how I feel. That's my job. Like, my job is to create. Their job is to is to regurgitate in a perfect way. Oh, and, so, and, and to sell tickets and have the fans come in because they want to hear that one song perfectly the way it was on the record, right? Exactly, exactly. I mean, I was an early music fan like that. I loved hearing everything. When I went um, I went to go see Yes or I went to go see Genesis, I wanted to hear that prog rock. You want exact. to hear it just like, just like no, it was, right? No, and if the guy fucked up, you'd be like, ah, he blew it. He blew the <laughs> note there. <laughs> hey, I was harsh. <laughs> I, I mean, I, so am I. I uh, I'm a musician. I mean, I'm very, very, um, very exacting with what I do. So if, yeah. Well, you have high standard. You have high I have standards. Extremely high musical standards. Yes, and- you do, and and you have a, an amazing amount of talent. And to hear you so honest about your career and how what it was like to go to Berkeley in the early years and how frustrating it was, that's gold, man. Because you're so accomplished now that when I hear you play now, I hear that you know, I hear you just ripping through those scales, and it, it's effortless. You know, it comes off at least of us on the listening side. It comes off like. This is part of you, and it's amazing to think about the whole process you've gone through your soul, whole life. And uh, I'm really looking forward to you getting back out and getting back to the states, the uh, mainland, as they say. Right? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. No, no, it's it's when <laughs> there's I don't know. There's there's a couple of things that might happen, and there's a there's there's some things that are you know you hear little little talks about some things that are nebulous that might happen coming down a pike. But as far as moving back there. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get things back to normal before I'm before I'm coming <laughs> before you're heading there. back there. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. a couple things again. Aux Chord Live is is the platform where you can see music. You got Natalie coming up. Anyone else that you want to mention? Uh, I would just say just come come through because there's a lot Check of different. Out. There's a lot of there's a lot of music and a lot of musicians who aren't necessarily within this realm. So I just want to come through. Um, especially after this week. We're going to announce a whole lot more shows. We've got a lot of things that we're just kind of waiting for because our site, we've 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 upgraded our site and it just we just got to the point of finishing the update. So come through. Come Beautiful. through. Yeah. And and also James did an amazing interview today. If you want to give him a tip for that crazy. If you want to give me story. a tip, I will gladly, gladly take it. I appreciate it. I mean, <laughs> yo, I actually want to talk to you about something for just a second. Give me a second. Go ahead. So, Good. All right, so it was really difficult to uh, it's like this whole live streaming thing. Like we've had to. Uh, I, I I realized why we could do it because if I could come out here and live stream, and all I had was a computer, my saxophone, uh, and my brother sent me out a really old interface and a really old microphone. If I could, if I could stream from here, then anybody could do it. You know how hard it was to get a camera. <laughs> Like any camera, any streaming camera. Like, uh, unfortunately, I'm I'm on my Mac right now, and the Mac cameras are not very good. The Mac cameras are not very good for. Yeah, I, I have a Logitech, cameras. and yes, I was I was talking to someone today. Told me they're paying uh, sixty buck premium to get a Logitech camera right now. It's ridiculous right now. So so, I'm like, okay, we're gonna be streaming for at least another year. Like, like 
we're, we're this is just the way things are going to be because there's so much virus, at least until a vaccine is come, like we're going to be mm -hmm. here for a while. I agree. So, I pulled the trigger on a real camera, like a real camera, like a like a, a yeah, mirrorless this, camera. Yeah, yeah, sure. Like a, I okay, so I got a um, I got a Sony A6400. Um, I don't know anything about cameras. I don't know anything, but everybody was like, well, if you're going to do it, if you're really going to, if you're really, really going to come and look good, you got to do something like, like you got to get, a, you got to get a mirrorless camera. You got to get a one with a clean HDMI out and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, all right, I'm doing this. It takes a month to get here. It's not even here yet. It's not here. Anything that comes from Amazon takes a month to get here because of COVID. And it's, uh -huh. it's anyway. Yeah, you're isolated so, um, over there, man. I, I love this island. There's fifty thousand people here, and there's nothing else. But and there's no COVID here. It's beautiful. But uh, the 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 creature comforts of being in in Brooklyn aren't the same. Well, they they call it rock fever. You get rock, <laughs> from being on the rock too long. You're like, I gotta get I, out. I heard about it. Yeah, yeah, I heard about it. Yeah, yeah, it's true. James, thank you so much. Stay safe over there. We'll be looking at you uh, for you on Oxcord Live. And appreciate uh, it, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Great conversation today, buddy. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. Take care. That, you know, there you go. Talent and building talent and, and, and finding your talent and honing your talent. I mean, that's incredible stuff right there. It just shows you that not everybody's born. You don't have a lot of these things don't come naturally. They come to us through years of practice, kind of like me here on this crazy 420 Live. Thank you all so much for tuning in this week. Tomorrow we have, oh yeah, I know we have tomorrow. We have Marco Cochran, Burning Man artist. He does the large, beautiful sculptures of the women. There's one at the park in Vegas uh, in the back there that they light up at night. They're like 10 stories high. I got some, actually found some photographs of his work on the playa. Uh, tomorrow will probably be, I mean, I don't want to say my last Burning Man-esque show because I've really opened up a, a whole thing there with the virtual world. So um, I think there's going to be a lot more of that. But um, thank you all for tuning in. Thanks, James Casey, and thanks, Richie Grossman, with DJ Richie G. Uh, peace, love, happiness, everybody out there. Big, big hug today. Uh, thank you all. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. We're going to have a great show. Take care. 420 Live, signing off. Jeff